Hi, welcome. Hope Savira here, creator of Core Functional Fitness. And I'm here to talk to you about a very important topic, and it's our ribcage. Um, uh, if you're following me and you watch my videos and read my blog, you probably know that I'm a big advocate for functional core health. It doesn't mean that we have a six or eight pack. It doesn't mean that we have a pack at all. But what it really means is that we're able to sustain proper core support and core health for a better functional life. That way, when we're 80 and 90 years old, we're not this little old lady in a walker, and we hopefully don't need to be using a scooter, but we can do all the basic functions of life that are ultimately what we really should be exercising or moving for. That's things like going to the bathroom on our own, getting up out of our bed, being able to play with maybe my one-day grandchildren on the floor, um, being able to walk, hip, skip, jump, hike, do whatever it is that I want to do in the future pain-free. And in order to do that, we have to really resonate back with our proper core health. And so I'm just gonna give you a little fitness nugget today and it's talking about the rib cage. So I talk a lot about pelvic neutral, pubis bone and hip bones run parallel with whatever you're facing. And this is to ensure that one, our organs are stacked more properly, but two, we're able to utilize the tissues that surround our torso or our core are working optimally. When we work in neutral, my last fitness nugget was talking about walking, and we want to walk with our legs, not our pelvis. Basically, we want our pelvis to stay stable so our legs can become mobile so that they get the flexibility and the strength that they need. But there's also another important portion of that, and that's the rib cage. So once we find pelvic neutral, for many of us, we're rib cage thrusters. Due to poor posture, we find that the rib cage is almost fixed in an external or popped out position. I see this a lot in female weightlifters. Uh, I used to always joke that they had a second set of boobs underneath their chest because they had all of this dominance in the thrusted ribs and then an overdevelopment in the protruded rectus abdominis, which is the front six pack muscle, that they kind of developed a second chest, so to speak. So when we think about the rib cage, I want you to find where the bottom of the ribs come up into that xiphoid process area and they kind of look like two little butterfly wings. Looking at this point here, I want you to exhale and really imagine dropping that portion of the rib cage down the best that you possibly can and really using your breath to help you with that. So when you inhale, try breathing into your side body, almost like you're opening up butterfly wings and as you exhale, feeling the front rib cage feed itself down. Now the tricky part with this is, is we want to minimize blowing air into our belly and so I always tell my students, our lungs are designed to breathe into, not our lower abdomen. And so pranayama and yoga, we talk a lot about, about DBA, deep abdominal breathing, and that's really important. But that's during pranayama. We're talking about movement and functional health right now. So anyways, back to our topic. I want you to think about the rib cage again. And so when you inhale, and then exhale, really moving the air out and feeling as though the front rib cage is knitting itself down. Now the reality of this knit is for most of us, it's gonna bring us into a kyphotic position because we spend most of our day like this or like this on our cell phone, and I'm guilty of it, our shoulder girdle is often frozen with the movement of our rib cage. So part of it is opening up the shoulders and chest, but also being able to work the rib cage down as need be. So my little challenge for you this week is, one, working with your pelvic neutral, pelvic core contraction, but also practicing exhaling and moving the front rib cage down. So why is this important? One, when the rib cage is flared up and open, it's gonna limit our ability to successfully use the rectus abdominis. And the rectus abdominis neighbor muscle is the gluteus maximus. So many people, let's say in the bridge pose, that don't work their rib cage appropriately in bridge will over squeeze the glutes. And that in essence turns off the rectus abdominis. When you're walking, this is really important because the rectus transversus obliques, all these muscles that attach to the rib cage, help stabilize the torso. So in walking, keeping that rib cage down is also in essence gonna help you fire your core more effectively, which is gonna help you do functional core work. Basically, using your core in everything that you do. And after you start to feel more comfortable with that rib cage coming down, now we're going to start to focus on opening up the chest and shoulders. And a nice little trick for practicing that is coming up against a wall, finding neutral pelvis, dropping the rib cage down, and then noticing your true kyphosis. 
So if I bring my arms up into a cactus and try to bring my shoulders, shoulder blades and arms into the wall without lifting the rib cage, this is really going to help me teach myself good rectus and good transversus core support versus if I would lift my arms and my whole rib cage would fly up off the wall. Now I can also try this, bringing the rib cage down, and by bending and extending my arms overhead, can I lift my arms up again without lifting the front of the rib cage. The reality with this type of work is that it's not easy and it's going to take time. But add for the meantime, when you're walking and moving around during the day, practice pelvic neutral, but also practice rib cage and spinal neutral and see how that happens or how that works for you. For more information, visit my website at hopecorefitness.com and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube page to receive amazing videos just like this one. From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, namaste.